I hope you guys are looking forward to Friday. And um, after this sharing, I hope you can have more things to think about <laughs> over the weekend. So um, the topic I'm going to share with you, um, as you can tell, it's going to be about AI, about machine intelligence, and about intelligent machines. So I, I'm going to explain what I meant by those. And I strongly believe intelligent machines are going to be the technology and the tool we are going to leverage. We can all build towards it to make overall our life and our society better. So if you look um, through the history, right, look at some of the major technology development, and associated with every technology advancement, there are a number of, uh, there are typically a number of innovations, right? And with these innovations comes about great increase in productivity and then improvement of our life. And if you look at actually through, you know, starting, let's say, just look at um, the invention of steam engine, all the way, you know, through cars, internet, mobile internet, and then all the way to today, right? The last one, maybe we, we, we can think of, we are between the big data, uh, smartphones, and IoT to the next even bigger thing. So this is where I would explain a little more and use some example about it. Now, keep in mind, one of the things um, I want to share with you, with us, if you look at the history, of course, with it, we so far have actually succeeded in basically garnishing all the power from the technology and to make our society better. But it doesn't mean it's always going to be a smooth sailing, right? If you look at, at the car, right? When the car was invented and introduced, I mean, in England, actually there was this red flag law, right? What it is basically says, you know, um, because the host carriages were there before and the car comes along and you're going to disrupt the host carriage business, right? So then red flag law says, you know, if you are behind a carriage in a car, when someone waves that red flag, you should not pass them. I mean, you, you have just have to follow, right? Imagine if that kind of thing continued and with every step of that technology, of course, we cannot think about what we have today. Uh, we cannot probably even imagine it. So then let's start with AI, right? And of course, you know, as early when, when Turin wrote about and thinking about intelligence and the machine, and already um, he thinks this is a significant issue for us, right? Of course, the early AI definition is more based on a reference to humans' logic thinking, right? If you think about early 80s, we did all kind of rule-based AI, and it may just simply help us to decide, you know, should you put in your grocery bag eggs on top of you know, a block of ice or below a block of ice? I mean, that's, you know, we, we feel we, we didn't go far with that. But then, you know, when AlphaGo comes along and started showing actually the machine can beat human in playing Go, considered to be one of the very complex games, that get people thinking, right? And in this case, of course, the first thing people think about is now we have this thing, maybe it's not AI anymore, it's uh, machine intelligence because it's different. And at least based on our original definition, it's actually beat, beating the human, right? So that's where the machine intelligence, and then recently we have more people discussing what is machine intelligence. But when you look at it, maybe uh, we can plainly look at it says machine intelligence is simply, if you look at the way it can do the learning, it can learn more categories of more complex strategies, and it can learn them much faster. So that is probably the biggest difference if you look at today, a lot of deep learning, machine learning, compared to we have in early days, right? That is really the biggest difference. That is what get people thinking in terms of machine intelligence. Now the question is, is that enough, right? We humans, you can think that we are greedy or you can also think we have the spirit always looking for innovation. 
So we are not going to stop at machine intelligence. Um, let's think about in terms of intelligent machines. Now, what I re when I refer to intelligent machines, we actually can think of on top of what they said about machine intelligence. That's where we can learn very complex things, complex strategies, very efficiently. So you can think of it as purely the intelligence aspect. But then we should not forget we have had machines. I mean, all kinds of machines, right? Think of, um, you know, from cars and to bulldozers. All those machines, and they do have their own very strong things we have been leveraging for ages, right? And that is where it can be very reliable, durable, and can be very efficient. Again, can accomplish things we as humans, if we use our bare hand, we just could not have. So that is where we should look at it, right? We are not going to be satisfied with just building a machine can play games with us, and every time it will beat us, says, duh. I mean, that, that, that's not much fun, right? So this is where we can look into intelligent machines. And we're looking at the machines that we can design and build it to do the things we would like them to help us to do, to accomplish. Yet, it's going to be to a point where we actually can touch and feel, not simply just watching something. And that is where the machine, intelligent machines can really bring us to. Of course, in addition to those physical power and uh, efficiency, behind it, the intelligent part mainly coming from the new development in the machine learning technologies. And of course, um, without going into a lot of these details, um, you know, from the early days, right, very simple rule base, then to a number of disciplines based on the, an extension on top of the statistical uh, disciplines. And then if you look at today, for, for example, looking at one of the ways to look at deep learning, simply it could remove a lot of manual uh, discovery of features, um, basically the ways to characterize a problem, right? That's, think of that as features in machine learning terms. And we actually can sidestep a lot of those because the early days when you have to manually discover features, that also means you know, your thinking is limiting how much the machine learning algorithm can learn. If you can actually learn directly from the raw data, of course, then all of a sudden you uh, have the opportunity to relinquish the biggest um, power of the machine learning, deep learning discipline. Of course, then, if you think of today's game playing, um, very complex strategy, this is where the reinforcement learning discipline um, has a lot to do with it. Of course, I, mean, I believe you know, we have so many um, bright scientists working on this, and so many people get into this discipline, so we can expect um, to have better and better algorithm here. Now, let me go back a little bit to DD Trushin, and mainly for the purpose of using what we are doing on DD's ride sharing platform to illustrate how much of the machine learning and big data can actually bring us, right? Today, um, if you look at on DD's platform, right, every day we are serving 20 million plus rides. This is successfully completed rides every single day, right, across about 400 plus cities uh, in China. So that accounts for about 400 million riders, I mean, over on this platform. And so far it has 17.5 uh, million drivers actually working on the platform. Now the interesting thing is, this is all accomplished by a simple you know, interface to the user that is simply a mobile app. Right. On this mobile app today, it already provided a whole suite of services. And it's interesting because from day one, uh, DD feel transportation, it is a big problem. I mean, it's becoming bigger with population, uh, with you know, crowded uh, roads and pollution and everything else. So this simple app from day one actually accounted for the taxi, 
and all the way to different ride needs, right? The taxi is simply for the taxi drivers to use this app, use this platform to get the needs from the riders, from the passengers, right? Then if you look at, it has intercity, um, what it called a hitch ride. Um, actually, it become both a practical ride and also become a social platform for people to get to know each other. Then all the way to actually, for example, the minibus. And this is where it's actually getting closer, bring this platform to integration with the public transportation system. Again, we believe that's where the whole ride sharing and revolution of transportation needs to be because you have to be able to bring it all together to people. Um, one of the notion is this single app in the future, you can imagine yourself use the app, depending on where you want to go, where you are, it might use a mixed mode, right? From riding a, uh, basically a short-term rented bike all the way to take a ride on Didi's platform to then bring you to, let's say, a train, right? That is really the power of this. Now this, of course, means there is a lot of data, right? With all this traffic going every day. So if you look at today, right, we're talking about right now, it has been in practice uh, for a long time on this platform, is using this data, it allowed us to accomplish a number of things, right? Uh, one of the biggest things um, you can think of, any time when you actually use your app to say, you know, I want to go to my destination X. So this is where the platform actually take where you are, where you want to go, predict as far as to 10, 15 minutes in terms of what the traffic, the demand is going to be like, right? It has to decide how to dispatch, dispatch now versus, you know, seconds, minutes later, and what is the best route. And then nowadays, more and more also, it takes into account because we introduced one of the thing is even on, let's say, an express ride from A to B, we want to try to leverage all the seats in that car, not just for a single passenger. So again, in this particular case, not only they take into account this route, the optimization, it also take into account what is the desire of the driver. Because the driver, maybe it's in that vicinity in a destination or a different destination. Then the driver may express the desire to not have too many of the sharing. So these are all part of the thing we can only accomplish by leveraging the machine learning, the big data analytics with a huge amount of data. And of course, um, not to mention the whole congestion uh, related issues, because this is where uh, all the way from, you know, with traffic condition things, you have to do the uh, pre-scheduling, but also uh, you may have issue of rush hours, morning versus night, right? Now let's look at um, actually what the newer things we're doing with the big data and machine learning on the platform. One of the things is what we refer to as intelligent uh, transportation. And as one of the application, this particular case, what we did was we looked at the data in one of the city in China uh, called G9, and we look at the traffic through six traffic lights in one of the main road in G9. And, and the idea is by looking at the traffic, predict the congestion condition and at the peak hours, and we want to find out what if we can dynamically synchronize the traffic lights across the six lights. That means it's no longer a fixed um, duration and it's no longer based on some kind of timer, right? So in that case, when we did that, and when we put the whole system into place uh, in about one to two months time frame, then we actually see the peak waiting time across the six traffic lights reduced by over 10%. So that's somewhere from, uh, used to be, uh, for example, 40 minutes or so, uh, reduced to uh, 30 some minutes. So that's one of the things, of course this work, we started um, pushing this technology and working with more city government and we started with in G9 
And then we have uh, now in also a number of Guiyang, the city, and also Shenzhen is another city that we have started this work. And then the second area, as an example, again, the application towards intelligent machine is we are leveraging augmented reality technology to see if we can help to improve the driving safety and comfort. So this is where, again, the idea is simply using the extra channels to be able to sense and get the condition the sensories and then fuse them through the AR technology so we can allow the driver to hear and uh, see the conditions they would otherwise not be able to. So of course we do, um, in addition to a big, um, big engineering team in China, uh, it's we have about half of the 7,000 people in China are in R&D and product development. And then we also have a team in Mountain View, uh, we call DD Labs. So really, um, the idea here is if you look at currently what we are focusing on three areas. One is the intelligent vehicles and security of this system. And the second one is about the general information security tools. Um, you can imagine on the DD's platform, in addition to all the transactions and, and trace data, we also have a lot of payment, basically for the driver and for the passengers, right? And their safety and security is very important. And then the third area is about AI and the AR application. And actually, we believe, um, in particular, the augmented reality technology is going to become a very key technology that enables the intelligent machines to integrate with our everyday life in an as seamless way as possible because that is going to be the most critical thing about how successful we are actually leveraging this technology. And of course, um, one of the things also with uh, DD is um, kind of tied to what um, Thomas was mentioning early. In today's age, we simply believe to solve the kind of grand problem in terms of transportation and also in terms of applying the AI to everyday life, um, it's very important to have an open collaborative environment. Every problem now become big when we want to tackle them. It needs to be an ecosystem-based approach. So that's where we also have started a lot of collaboration with universities, with other companies um, in this endeavor. So now, very quickly, I mean, I want to mention this one thing, right? That is, uh, we believe the transportation um, is going to be transformed, right? And there are three main components. One is really the electric vehicle. The second is the notion of the shared economy. And then the third one is really automation. That includes um, also autonomous driving. And that is what we should work towards. And last thought, and we believe this is a great time with a lot of opportunity. As we said, in order to turn this technology advancement revolution into productivity and improve of life, uh, we have to work together. That means you know, from entrepreneurs to government to investors, right? Uh, really let go of your innovation spirit and your entrepreneur spirit, and we should work together. Thank you very much.